college crowd here, don't forget, before you have babies, get married. I mentioned a strong military and strong families, and I want to mention one more, and that is a strong economy. And I know, you know, I know in a, in a, lot, of, in a lot of places, and that's probably not true at USC, but a lot of college campuses, the economy gets short shrift. It's like, well, that's just money for big companies, and, and it's a, what's in your pocketbook, and that's not important. Well, let me tell you, if you want a nation that has a military to defend you against the jihadists and against other evil people who would cause the, the conquering of the world, you have to have a strong military. To have a strong military, you've got to have a strong economy. You can't have a tier one military to protect you and have a tier two economy. The Soviet Union tried that during the last half of the second century, and they were unable to keep up. And uh, Ronald Reagan taught him a lesson. I love, I love what he said about his strategy to win the Cold War. Did you ever hear that? He said, it's very simple. We win, they lose. So a strong economy is necessary to keep us safe, and a strong economy is necessary to keep homes well and strong, where our, our, our kids have good jobs they can go to, and where, where there's food on the table and good health care, and, and, and all the, 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 the necessary supports that a great family needs. And so we need a strong economy. And I'll tell you one thing, I'll never be pessimistic about America's economy. I recognize we can compete with anybody in the world. I've been in the business sector all my life, 25 years in the business world. I've seen jobs come, I've seen them go. I haven't been, always been 100% uh, successful at everything I've touched. I've learned from failures as well as from successes. But I see it always makes sense to fight for every single good job, yeah, to support yeah. every good industry, yeah. and I'll fight as President of the United States to keep this economy strong, Woo! to keep the jobs here strong, and to yeah. compete with anyone in the world because I know we can and we will win time and again. staying ahead forever in the private sector. The real key is innovation and change. And I just, just I shouldn't go into all this, but, but I love this, the, the topic so much. I, I announced my campaign at the Henry Ford Museum of Innovation in Dearborn, Michigan for a reason. And that's because I believe innovation is key not only to business, but of course to government and to, uh, and to mi the military. Things are constantly changing. And what you have to do if you want to stay ahead is lead the change. I, uh, in such an unusual area, let me tell you a little story. Uh, I, was, uh, I was responsible for a firm that invested other people's money. They gave me their money, and then I got to invest it for them. And if I did well, I got to keep a little piece, or a big piece. <laughs> it depended on how well I did. And, uh, and so I listened to new ideas and tried to pick among those that I thought were the most, uh, the most innovative. There was one that sounded so simple, and it sounded so, such a bad idea. And, uh, and I saw how it changed an industry. Someone came into my office named Tom Stenberg, and he said, I got a great idea. He said, every time you want to buy stationery or office supplies, particularly if you're a little, a little company with one or two employees, you know, you go to one of these shops, and they want to charge you a fortune. Maybe they'll deliver the goods to you, but it's real expensive. He said, I want to have a store that's about five or 6,000 square feet. That's about the size of this room. And I want to sell office supplies at half price. And, uh, and so I talked to a bunch of consultants and advisors and said, what do you think about that idea? And everyone said, it's a bad idea. <laughs> I said, why is that? And they said, well, because in business, people want convenience. They want to focus on their mission. They don't want to have to get in a car and go buy office supplies. That doesn't make sense. They want to have them delivered. And a little extra cost is not what uh, makes their decision for them. Well, we talked to some customers and some businesses and so forth and came to a different conclusion. So we put... I think it's about a million and a half dollars in that very first Staples, uh, uh, yeah, Staples uh, investment. Opened the first Staples store. Now they have 80,000 employees around the world. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the power of innovation. And anytime you see an industry that's struggling, you say, is there some way? Is there some way of investing in technology and innovation? Is there some new idea? Is there some way that America can keep its hold on this industry, change it in some ways? But make sure we lead the world. And if I'm president, as I said, I'm going to fight to keep every good job in this country. And I'm optimistic that our future is bright, that our economy will be strong, that our military will be, will be strong, that our values will be enduring. And all of this comes not only from our, my belief in the power of change and innovation, but also in my 
belief in the heart of the American people. Wherever I go, I'm inspired by the American people. And uh, I have uh, so many stories I can tell you about that, I could bore you for hours, but I'll only bore you for another couple of minutes. This just came, this just came from a, uh, a young woman who convinced me of the nature of the American spirit and the, and the human quality that you see in great people. Her name is Vanetta Flowers. Anybody heard that name? No, didn't think so. Uh, you may remember her name. Vanetta Flowers is a woman's bobsledder. And, uh, and during the, uh, the lead up to the games of 2002 that I got the chance to run, Vanetta Flowers was on, uh, often on uh, our case trying to get women's bobsled into the Olympics because they've never been in the Olympics before 2002, and that's because they said it was too dangerous for women. And our women said, come on, guys, we want to partic participate. And basically because our team, the U.S. team, was so strong, I fought to get them in so we could get another gold. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, the team one, team one has sled one piloted by someone named Jean Racine. And Jean is terrific. We were sure if we could get in the games to include women's bobsled, she'd get a gold on, on sled one. Team two in sled two, was headed by Jill Bakken, she was the pilot, and her brakeman was Vanetta Flowers. The brakeman in bobsled is the person that gets you going. That first sprint that really pushes that bobsled down the track, that's so key. And Vanetta is strong. And so we hope that maybe we get a, a bronze out of, out of a sled two, and we expected the gold in sled one. But just before the games, Jean Racine decided she wanted to change her brakeman. She thought Vanetta was stronger than her own brakeman. So she went to Vanetta and said, would you come on over and get on sled one with me? And a lot of us wanted that to happen. Because we knew that if we had the strongest brakeman on sled one, we'd get a gold medal for sure. And uh, Vanetta had a tough decision. Because she knew that if she left and went on that sled one, she'd get a gold medal for sure. She'd be one of the first two women in the history of the Olympics to get a gold medal in bobsled. She also knew that if she got that gold medal, she'd be the first African-American, male or female, to get a gold medal in the Winter Olympic Games. A lot of African-Americans have received gold medals in the Summer Games, but she'd be the first in the Winter Games. And, uh, and yet if she left her friend, Jill Bakken, who she'd been training with and competing with, she'd be leaving her in a very difficult position. And so Vanetta decided to put friendship and loyalty ahead of gold. And she stayed on sled too. And boy, were we disappointed. And uh, I mean, you, I don't know whether you remember the, the Salt Lake Games. You probably didn't watch women's bobsled with as much interest as I did with that story in mind. Uh, sled one did pretty well. There were some European sleds that did uh, real well. But then when sled two beat them all, we went crazy. <laughs> And that night at the Meadows Plaza, uh, Vanetta Flowers was one of those standing on the high podium. They raised the flag, and she had tears running down her face. You may recall seeing this beautiful young woman with tears running down her face and dripping off her chin. That was Vanetta. And, uh, and there was a lot of reason for emotion. She represented the country that was the hope on the earth. She was one of the first African Americans to get a gold medal. And one more thing. It turned out there was something that she didn't know. She was pregnant with twins at the time. <laughs> Vanetta's a hero of mine, along with a number of other heroes that I've met throughout my life, that convinced me that the heart and character of the American people is good and sound. We can overcome any challenge we have, as long as we have leadership that will tell us the truth yeah. and actually lead. Washington is broken. We need more people like Jim DeMint. We need more people who are willing to go to Washington and put policy and people ahead of the politics that go on there. I'm going to fight with you. I need your help. I need you guys to come to well, i got a fan over here. i got to i got to fight with all of you. We're going to work together to make sure our voice is heard loud and clear. Let the lobbyists in Washington be quaking in their boots and the long-term politicians. Let's have the people finally get the job done that they were elected to do. Let's fill out that to-do list. You see it up there? Those are all the things we're going to do. I'm going to do it with your help. We're going to do it together. We're going to make sure that America is as it has always been, the hope of the earth. Thank you.